Hey guys, today we're talking about cameras for travelers, whether you are thinking about vlogging your next trip or you just want to take great photos without lugging around a big DSLR, well I've got you covered in today's video. Hi, my name's JP and I've been traveling the world for over a year now and I've been recording every step of the way, whether it be in vlogs or photos that I post on Instagram. And I know some of you are really interested in what I use to record these things because you might want to use these for your upcoming trip or just your daily life. So today I'm going to share with you uh, my recommendations for what you should get. And these are all based off of things that I've ac I actually use, I actually have. So to start, let me just address why I don't use DSLRs while I travel. I did bring one out with me when I initially left the US uh, about a year ago, but it seemed really cumbersome and that, that one at the time was kind of an old DSLR, so it didn't take video, so it was kind of useless to me because I wasn't taking photos on it and I wasn't using it for video, so it just was kind of in the way. Do I eventually want to invest in a DSLR? Sure, why not? But it just, I can't even imagine carrying something like that and really wanting to pull it out unless like that was my main camera for the day. So instead, let's talk about the camera I'm using right now, which I think is taking a phenomenal video and I don't even think I need a DSLR with this thing. Okay, so this guy is the Canon G7X Mark II. It's my brand new vlogging camera and uh, it's amazing. Hi! <laughs> As you can see, it has a flip monitor. Um, which makes it excellent for vlogging, and a really great wide-angle lens that zooms up to four times before going digital. Um, it has a more ergonomic uh, design than the Mark I. As you can see, the image quality is phenomenal, and in low light particularly, it's really good. Even when I'm in like kind of like a dimly lit room, maybe not the darkest room, but still not the brightest, it still comes out pretty good. And it also, when you touch the screen, you can focus on other things. Now this really is the best camera I've ever owned and I, I paid the price for it. The camera is a whopping $700 and it is the best vlogging camera that, there, that you can find out there that's not a DSLR. So obviously you're getting great image quality for the expense, but there's a couple of other downsides to this camera. It doesn't quite fit in any kind of pocket except for maybe a coat pocket. And the microphone is at the top of the camera, which means that when wind blows, it will affect the sound quality of the video. But I would recommend this camera if you have the money to get it. It's a very pricey item. If you have a well-off loved one who really, really loves you a lot, maybe you can get this as a Christmas present. <laughs> I don't know. But if you're using a camera like this for the first time and you're actually like really not that serious about video or photography, then this might not be a necessary expense for you. Now, if you're definitely not in the market for this or it's not something that you really need, then I would recommend something as small as this. This is the Canon PowerShot ELF 350 HS, and this was the camera that I used all throughout Southeast Asia, and it takes pretty good video. Maybe not as crisp or focused as the G7X, but this one takes HD video, it has a microphone right in the front of the camera, so you can point the camera right at you and speak to it and it, the sound will pick up clearly. And it's small and compact. It can fit into your back pocket or your front pocket or whatever kind of pocket you want. And it's discreet too. So when I was vlogging with this camera, I always felt comfortable just having it out. Oh, and it also has 20 times optical zoom. If you wanna get candids of people from really far away without like getting up into their space, but still want that shot, you can get it with this. And this one you can find at $150. But before investing in any of these things, I would ask yourself, is your phone enough to get you by? You can still take video with it, but maybe not as much as a vlogger would. And it, it's, it works pretty well. And you don't have to carry around anything in addition to what you have. So you can just have like a, a, a good phone in your pocket at all times and take great photos and take good video with it. And if you don't have something like a Samsung or an iPhone, then you can just buy like a used one or an old model. And like even like iPhones like a few generations ago still has pretty good camera quality. I have the iPhone 6 Plus. It takes really good photos. It's definitely not as good as the new iPhone 7. But you know what? Before I upgraded to the G7X, I was using my iPhone as my primary photo camera, where the vlog camera was really for the videos and stuff. This was, this was what took the great 
photos. Okay, so maybe we've gotten this far and you're not interested in vlogging or taking really crisp photos of everything, but you wanna capture footage of really intense moments, uh, maybe doing something very active or adventurous. And so you probably know what's coming next. We're gonna be talking about the GoPro. This is also a recent upgrade. This is the GoPro Hero 5 Black and it's really awesome. They've done a lot of improvements over the generations to make this camera so usable for anybody and especially so travel friendly. As you can see, the video quality is great. This one you can turn on and off the fish eye lens effect, which in the past GoPro footage has always had that fish eye lens effect which is not always great. Um, great wide angle lens for all the action shots you wanna take. And this one can shoot in 4K, which is the only camera of all of the ones we're talking about today that can shoot in 4K. This GoPro also has a touch screen, which is really nice. You don't have to go through all the buttons just to get to the settings that you need. I believe it's also the first GoPro that doesn't require like additional casing to be underwater. Now, if you're gonna go diving, you should get a, a diving case. They, they make those for this model. But uh, generally, if you can like splash water on it or just go into the, the, the ocean at the beach and it should be fine. This new one costs $400, which is pricey, but if you wanna get another model, maybe the generation before it or two generations before it, you're gonna find them for a lot cheaper. So it's worth it to just have a model of the GoPro. I, I upgraded from the GoPro Hero 2, which came out I don't know, like uh, six years ago. And that one worked just fine. Again, you don't need something as brand new and technologically advanced as this, but an action camera does help a lot. So now let's just quickly get through the accessories that I use. This is a Joby Gorillapod. The Gorillapod's a really flexible tripod that you can like attach to different things. And uh, it's really useful when you want to get some like interesting shots, maybe like hang, hang the camera from someplace so that you can get like this like above head uh, shot of you walking. And these come in all different sizes and hold uh, different weights of cameras. So uh, you can invest in one probably for as low as $10. I also use this combo tripod selfie stick thing. So right now it's a tripod but you can collapse this. I'm not gonna collapse this right now. It's gonna ruin my video quality. But you can collapse this and extend the pole and use it like a selfie stick. You can turn this so to angle the camera in front of you. And it also comes with attachments so that you can put your like cell phone up on it just to take the selfie. And then finally, let's talk about file storage because you're not gonna be able to get by with just one SD card for your one camera. You're gonna need a few, especially if you're going someplace you've never been before and you wanna take a ton of photos. Now, if you're just carrying like two SD cards, you could probably alternate with like the one single SD card case. But if you're carrying a lot, I recommend getting one of these. This is a Pelican case and it carries all my SD cards. There's slots for micro SD as well as standard SD cards. And it's really helpful in not only organizing your SD cards, but also just making sure that they are protected and they don't get damaged while you're traveling. But I am definitely not keeping all my footage just on those SD cards and just like leaving them there until I edit the video. I have a lot, a lot of footage. So I need to put that stuff somewhere. Because I carry around a laptop, I carry around also an external hard drive. This is the Seagate Backup Plus Slim, and it has two terabytes, and it's really nice, really portable, uh, lightweight. And as someone who vlogs and edits and does all that stuff, this is really good. Over a year of travel, I still haven't run out of space on this one. You can get this for 80 bucks, but if you wanna get something that has less storage, like a one terabyte, you're gonna get it for less than that. So those are my tried and true recommendations for you. And if you wanna learn more information about everything, all the links are down below, so you can go check them out for yourselves. And if you're shopping for any of these items or anything for loved ones this holiday season, please consider using the link jpgoesglobal.com slash Amazon. When you use that link to shop on Amazon, you are helping to support this channel and me in creating new content to inspire other people to travel with travel tips, travel vlogs, and this video that hopefully was helpful to you. 
If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please share this video with anybody who you think would find this useful. Uh, follow me on all the social medias. All the links are down below. And subscribe because I'm posting videos every single week while I travel the world. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, get off the couch and go do great things. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.